Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on gen clock derivation. So we had a typical scenario over here where your generated clock waveform was something like this. The first, the first rising edge of your gen clock arrived at the first edge of your master clock. The second rising edge of the of the gen clock arrived at the fifth edge of the master clock. But the but the middle edge, the fall edge, which is the second second edge of the gen clock, it's it's neither on two nor on three. So how do we how do we code this kind of scenarios? So let's see what do we have. So we have the gen clock uh, over here. We have the gen clock name. We have the source and port pin. Let's put it that. So this all we know. The name of the generator clock is gen underscore clock, and and its master is master underscore clock. So now what do we have? Let's try to put what do we have. So we have the first edge of the gen clock or the rise edge of the gen clock at the first edge of the master clock. So let's put an edge of one over here. Okay. Next we have is we have the second we have the first fall edge which is close to your second edge. Okay. The pre the previous edge of this particular edge of the master is the second edge of your master clock. So let's put let's put that over here. Okay, let's put the second edge over here for for time being, and the last edge or the second rising edge is at the fifth edge of your master clock. So let let's put it over here. So now this is where your shifted edge comes into picture. So shifted edge says that that this edge is shifted by how many nanoseconds from from your master clock. So for example, for example, let's say this is your first edge. This is the first edge of your of your gen clock. It is. It is not the first edge of your gen clock. Basically, the rise edge of the gen clock is on the first edge of the master clock. Now we have to say that this the rise edge of the gen clock is shifted by how many nanoseconds from the first edge of the master clock. And over here, the answer is zero. So let's put a zero over here. Okay. Next, we have to, what we have to ask ourselves is the 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 fall edge of this particular gen clock is shifted by how many nanoseconds of the second master clock edge. So the answer is it's at three nanosecond, and the second clock edge comes at two nanosecond. The answer is one nanosecond. So it says that the fall edge of the gen clock is shifted by one nanosecond from the second edge of the master clock. Okay, so your the fall edge of your gen clock is shifted by one nanosecond from second edge of the master clock. Okay, and finally you have the second rising edge. The second rising edge. We are, the second rising edge comes at the fifth edge, and it is shifted by how many nanoseconds? It is shifted by zero nanosecond. So let's put a zero over here. So, it, so this is how you can represent this kind of waveform using this structure, and the rest all will be none. The values for the rest all will be none. So in so this says that any kind of waveform which is present at the generator clock pin or the generator clock port can be defined with the existing switches that we have, or existing options or the properties of the generator clock that we have. So that is always possible. So any kind of waveform we have been given over here, using the shifted edge and edge combination, or using the divided by multiplied by, sorry, divided by inverted and duty cycle, all these options are 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 just enough for us to represent any kind of waveform that a circuit might generate. Okay. So this was about the gen clock derivation and the shift and the and the introduction to the shifted edge option. The final one that we have been pending is the multiply by multiply by option and the duty cycle. So it's it's pretty simple. It's not as complicated as we had the previous ones. So multiply by. Let's look into a sample circuit. So for example, you have a ZOR gate. The ZOR gate. One of the inputs of the ZOR gate is the master clock. Okay. And the second input to the ZOR gate is the master clock, but delayed by two nanosecond. Okay, and the uh, then and the combination of this particular thing will create a generated clock out of it. So let's try to first build the waveform. So for example, you have this master clock which is at which is coming at rise edge as zero nanosecond, the fall at four, and the and the, and the third rise at zero nanosecond, uh, eight nanosecond. So for example, this master clock is of a period eight nanosecond because this is the one full clock cycle. Okay, so the master clock has a period of eight nanosecond. When we say multiply by, which means the frequency of this particular, let's say this eight nanosecond, it will have some frequency x frequency. The the generated clock should be a faster frequency, faster clock frequency. So it so basically whatever waveform you see over here, there will be smaller waveform which you see over here. Let's see, let's see, let's try to derive it. So this is the master clock that goes directly to the input of the ZOR gate. Okay, and let's draw the delayed delayed uh, master clock, which is at at the delay of two nanosecond. Okay, so the waveform that is over here, the, which is the master clock dash, it is at a delay of two nanosecond. So this is the waveform that you see at this input. 
okay now zor so zor if you have one one cross one one zor one is zero and one zor zero is one okay so basically all the the, the uh, unequal inputs at the the unequal inputs of the zor gates create a logic one and same inputs at the uh, at the uh, at the input of the zor gate creates a logic zero so if you, if you have similar inputs at the input of the zor gate the output of the zor gate is zero so let's draw it so output of the zor gate is zero if you have if you have dissimilar at the if if you have dissimilar logics at the input of the zor gate for example logic 1 and logic 0 the output of the zor gate is logic 1 okay so over here you have similar uh, similar logics at the input of the zor gate you have logic 0 logic 0 output of the log, uh, output of the zor gate is logic 0 and again you have dissimilar logics at the input of the zor gate which is logic 0 and logic 1 so output of the zor gate is logic 1 so this is the waveform that you see at the output now the if you ca try to calculate the period of this multi of this particular waveform so the period of this this is one particular clock cycle so the period of this clock cycle is 6 minus 2 which is 4 nanosecond and initially it was it was 8 nanosecond so so 4 nanosecond is half of 8 nanosecond so that's why it's a multiply by circuit okay period will get divided and your clock frequency will, will get multiplied so now how to code this particular waveform over here let's do it so you have the gen clock you have the master clock and you have the multiply by option you can just give multiply by option as 2 and you give the 50 percent duty cycle that's all that's all uh, uh, that's all the only option that is needed to define a multiply by circuit now for example if there was a circuit that had created a an output waveform with a duty cycle of, of let's say 30 and 70 for example the waveform uh, the waveform wa was uh, at the rise edge for 30 percent of the duty for 30 percent of the clock cycle and and was at the fall side for 70 percent of the duty cycle you just need to modify this th this thing okay multiply by will be still remaining at 2 but you can you can always modify the duty cycle you can put 30 over here so that will define your rising edge and the remaining will be for your fall edge okay so this was the multiply by circuit was pretty simple so that's all we had from the generated clock point of view in the next and or in the upcoming uh, videos we'll be coming up with more uh, frequently asked interview questions and try to solve that so let's try to bring up some more questions from the next video thank you